Hey guys, what is up? Happy Sunday, or if you're watching this on another day, happy whatever day it is for you out there. I hope you're having a great day if it is not Sunday. Um, yes, so. Today we're gonna be focusing on some dollar store projects, which I love working on dollar store DIYs. They are such a fun challenge for me. I will literally walk around multiple dollar stores all day long, just staring at everything, piecing things together, figuring out different ways to kind of create things and upcycle pieces. And today I have four really cute DIY projects, including a piece of furniture that I'm going to be creating for you guys, which is super cool. I'm very excited about that. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, make sure to click the subscribe button. It is 100% free. I post brand Brand new home decor and DIY content every single week for you guys and also click that little bell icon even if you haven't clicked it yet it's right by the subscribe button click that it actually notifies you when I upload new videos which is really nice we have a lot of fun stuff to conquer in today's video so let's go ahead and get started so for our first project I went to mainly the crafting section of the dollar store I guess you could say and I found this glass vase which I feel like everyone uses these in their dollar store makeovers and then I'm also gonna be using some of these wooden dowels you get 12 in a pack for a buck which is pretty great and last but not least one of these little wood hands hanging decor pieces. It looks like a Christmas ornament. Um, I'm going to be using it as a base for my project. And this is in the crafter square section if you're curious. So literally three bucks of tools and supplies. So let's get into this one. So here is what that packaging on those dowels looks like. And I also went ahead and used the hockey puck. I'm referring to the little wood piece as the hockey puck. So the first thing is I unpackaged three packs of the dowels and I cut them down off camera to five and a half inches in size. And I'm gonna be using a little bit of fine grit sandpaper just to kind of clean up those ends that we went ahead and cut. And now we're cutting the string off of our hockey puck here and we're gonna go ahead and glue our vase upside down. So I'm applying a generous amount of glue, but more so on the inside. That way it drips down and connects it because we're not gonna want any glue on the outside. So we're gonna place that on top of our little wood circle here. I'll make sure that's nice and adhered and centered. And then we can go ahead and start adding our dowels. So the dowels are gonna be added right above the wood piece that we added. And they're gonna be continuously glued all the way around the outside of the piece, kind of creating like a fluted scalloped detail, which I think looks really nice in the end and adds so much interest to this piece. So this is very continuous here. I'm just gonna be gluing the dowels all the way around the outside of the piece. And I do suggest using the hot glue that I use, which is the Gorilla Hot Glue Sticks. I'll link them below for you guys. I buy them on Amazon. They're incredible and adhere to glass really nicely. Next, I brought the piece outside and used my matte clamshell spray paint, which is a really pretty whitish ivory color. And I sprayed my entire piece with three even coats of the spray paint, let it dry, and I brought it back inside and styled it as a candle holder. Now for our next project, we're using an unconventional material. My friend Justin Ray here on YouTube actually used a dog toy in a DIY a while back. So it gave me the idea to create a really cute pot for a plant. So this is something that you kind of put over an existing pot. It's almost like a pot cover, if you will. So it's not something you're gonna wanna plant your plant in, of course, but we're gonna be creating a little plant pot out of a couple of dog toys. I used three total, so let me share with you how I did it. So here are what the dog toys look like and the actual coloring of them is really cute. It has like a pastel thread running through it, which I love. But the first thing we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and unknot this entire toy so we can use the rope itself to create our project. So I'm just going ahead and kind of trying to unwind this. It took me about five minutes per dog toy, not too bad at all. Untying the knot at the top there as well. You can also easily snip away any knots you need to, but do keep in mind that this dog toy does unravel really easily. So be pretty careful with the end pieces. As you can see, it unravels quite a bit. So once you do cut it, add a little bit of hot glue to that section like shown here and use some wax paper or something that you can easily squeeze to make sure that that end is nice and bound together for our next step, which is going to be creating the base of our pot. So all you're going to want to do for this is actually just spiral the rope around itself to create a substantial base that your pot can, of course, sit on. So you're going to want to make something large enough that's not going to topple over or fall over. So I'm just going ahead and winding the rope around itself to create probably about a five inch base to start. Thank you. 
Once you have your base section created, you can start elevating the glue a little bit and kind of adding it a little bit higher and start winding up your rope just a little bit higher and higher each time you add a bit of glue to the section. So as you can see here, wrapping the rope around and just kind of pressing it on top of the previous rope. And you're just gonna wanna elevate it a little bit more each time, but keep it pretty gradual as you go because you're not gonna want it to go all of a sudden from like nothing to a humongous like increase. So I suggest just going a little bit at a time and then once you do finish off one of your ropes, just apply a little bit of glue to the ends and make sure to use the tip of your hot glue gun to adhere all of those uh, ends together. That way they're nice and stuck. To add in a new dog toy, just butt it up to the one that you previously had, add some glue to that section and it kind of camouflages itself honestly from the outside and you can also make sure to keep all of your kind of cutoff strands and restart sections in one area. That way you can have that on the back. Just glue off any additional threads at the end and that finishes off your pot. For our next project, we're using foam rings. Now, my friend Erica from Peony and Honey, she created a really cute planter from these. And actually following the tutorial that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys, you can totally make this a planter as well. All you would do is just nix the step of cutting out a hole. But today, I wanted to go ahead and create a pendant light with these. What I suggest for a pendant light like this is to use an LED bulb. They do not get hot, so you can go ahead and you know put an LED bulb in here. And this is more so of a light that you're gonna to wanna to put over a table where the light needs to be directed downwards. It's not gonna illuminate an entire room but it's a quirky fun cute little dollar store project and it cost me like eight dollars to create a really cute pendant light and this is just such a vibe to me so let me share with you how I did it so here are all of my foam rings. I ended up using seven of these and they're in the floral section at the dollar store. I grabbed a scrap piece of cardboard and I'm going to go ahead and trace the inside of one of these circles and I'm gonna be cutting it out and actually cut it out a little bit wider than what you think because we're gonna be gluing this onto the top of one of the rings and this is going to actually be what mounts our light cord to the light pendant itself. So as you can see here, I'm going through and using an Ikea light cord. I just happen to have one of these on hand and I'm gonna go ahead and just trace out the circle that I need to cut out right in the center of that cardboard circle that we cut out. You're gonna stick through your light cord to make sure that it fits nice and tightly. And then we're gonna go ahead and actually start gluing our rings together. So using some strong bond adhesive, I just used hot glue, it worked perfect. Ensuring that the seams of all of your rings are in the backside or in one section, will make sure that it also looks nice and cohesive in the end. So I'm just going and adding a generous amount of hot glue to each of the rings, applying one on top of the next and just letting them dry and just working my way up to create a tower of rings. Now, once you reach the top of your project, we're gonna go ahead and glue in our cardboard disc. So I'm applying adhesive on the outside of the cardboard, but we are gonna go ahead and reinforce it in just a second here. So I'm pressing this down into the top of our light there, and you can kind of see how this is creating a shade at this point. But I also did go back and pipe in additional hot glue on the top of that ring there, just to ensure that it was nice and adhered. Now for our next step, we're gonna be using some household paint and just a little bit of baking soda. This paint was a uh, Pale Oak by Benjamin Moore, and I also added in a little bit of brown just to kind of make it more of a tannish shade. So mixing in that baking soda is actually gonna give it a grainy finish and really make the piece look like a ceramic piece in the end, which I love. And I'm also gonna be using a coarser brush to apply the paint on. I just find that this gives a little bit more texture and I also love the quality of how it really makes the piece look handmade. I think it adds a little bit of character and charm, which I love for this particular piece. So I'm going through and covering up absolutely everything that is green, all of the sides. I'm also gonna go in and do the top as well. Once that dries, you could flip it over and paint the underside. And I also did go through and paint a little bit of the inside as well. And when this piece dries, you could simply slip your light cord through, add a light bulb and you're good to go. Or you can even use it as it's kind of shown here as a plant pot. And the last project, which I think is the craziest one in the video. Oh my gosh, look at that nice golden illumination on me. Um, that is because we're gonna be using one of these golden serving trays from the Dollar Tree. I love the fluted detail on the edge. And I also found a couple of these bowls here. These are stunning. They're like a very thick plastic material and they're also fluted as well. So I grabbed seven of these and we're gonna be putting them together and making a side table. 
And now comes the time where I share with you how I turned these plastic bowls and this golden serving tray along with this cement into a side table. So the first thing I did was actually filled up one of the bowls with a generous amount of the cement powder. Now you can get this bucket of cement at a hardware store for like eight bucks, you guys, super affordable. And I'm also gonna be adding some water in here. We're gonna be mixing it directly in one of the bowls and actually letting it harden because we're gonna want our side table to have some weight. So this is actually going to be the base of our side table. It's going to be the bowl with the cement inside of it. Now with your other bowls, we're going to go ahead and start adhering these together with the wider sides first. So I'm going through and adding adhesive or hot glue, a really strong bond one, around the top rim of that bowl. And I'm going to line up the fluting on the bowl and connect them together like this to almost create what looks like a little lampshade. I think it looks really cute, but we're going to be creating a series of these, which we're then going to glue together to create the base of our table there. So going ahead and adhering on our second one there. Once you're glued all of your sections together, we're going to start adhering those sections to each other. So as you can see here, I freaking left the sticker on. I don't know why I decided to do that. I wish I can go back and slap myself right now, but I did. But for the next one, I knew what I needed to do. I took the sticker off. I applied a really, really generous amount of hot glue there. And then you're going to press your other one on top. And you guys really let this cure for about 20 minutes or so because the hot glue really does stay hot when you apply a lot. I almost had mine topple over because I thought it was dry after like 10 minutes and it really wasn't. So on the top there, applying one more more half bowl here because we're actually going to flip the entire piece over and adhere that to our cured cement. So inside of there, the cement is fully dry. Of course, I'm applying glue on the outside of this, and then we're going to flip the entire piece over and attach it together. That way we have our nice and good base for our table. This is just going to weight it down and make sure that it's not toppling over anything if someone walks next to it. And then on the top of our piece, we're going to just add one more half bowl like this. And this is going to be the base section for applying our tray on. So apply a generous amount of glue there, pop your tray on top. And I did pipe some additional glue on the underside just to make sure it was nice and adhered. I brought the entire piece outside and I'm using this amazing burnished amber forged spray paint, which I love. I found this at Target in Arizona when I was back at my parents and it just sounded interesting to me. So I sprayed my entire piece and it really made it look like a vintage tin, which I love. It really gave it this really unique hammered metal texture, which makes this piece look so much more like metal, but the entire side table was made of plastic and it cost us $7 to create. And those are all my projects for you guys today. I hope that you enjoyed these and I hope maybe that this gave you some inspiration next time you're at the Dollar Tree. You could pick up some of these and recreate projects with them. And if you do, please also share them with me over on Instagram. Tag me at Lone Fox Home or direct message me if you'd like to. I try to get back to as many of you as I possibly can. And on top of that, I also wanted to mention that I have been posting a bunch over on TikTok. My username is the same as my Instagram. Both of them are Lone Fox Home if you want to head over and check those out. But I will catch you guys all in my next video. I hope that you enjoyed this one. I'd love to know what you guys are doing for the 4th of July. I believe that is today and I hope you're having a very safe and amazing 4th. I will catch you guys all in my next video and I really think that that's all for today. Oh, I don't want to get off camera but I'm going to have to. I'll let you guys go. Have an amazing rest of your day. Bye guys.